and welcome to episode 23 of Unpacking Articles. The article we're going to unpack today is called To Give is Better Than to Receive the Benefits of Peer Review to the Reviewer's Own Writing. And as you can anticipate from the title, this article is comparing the benefits of providing versus receiving feedback on writing. Let's start first by talking about feedback. Very generally, we can say that feedback can focus on global issues such as organization, development of ideas, etc. And then you have more local issues such as grammar, vocab, spelling, etc. So previous research has focused mostly on whether the person receiving the feedback incorporated those suggestions or not. What about the person giving the feedback? Are they benefiting at all from the act of looking at someone else's composition in a critical way and suggesting ways of improving the writing? Could the act of providing feedback make second language learners better self-reviewers? Or do we see that most of the benefits go to the person receiving the feedback. That's what the study is trying to address. The participants were 91 English as a second language college level students in the US. 45 were in a class that they called high beginning and 46 were in high intermediate. Both of these courses were writing courses. The treatment groups were essentially givers and receivers means the students who gave feedback but didn't receive, the students who received feedback but didn't give. So 46 students, some were high beginning, some were intermediate, they were in the giver group, and 45 students, again a mix of high beginning and intermediate, were in the receiver group. They did four sessions with sample essay exercises where the giver group provided feedback to improve that paper, that sample essay, and the receivers used the feedback to revise the paper. And the sample essays were written by previous students. They were from a previous class. The assessment measures, meaning how improvement was assessed, was through pre and post test. They did a timed essay for 30 minutes at the beginning of the semester and another timed essay, again, 30 minutes at the end of the semester. Now, we don't know the topics. They were not disclosed. And that's perhaps the first red flag, if you will. All of their essays that they wrote for pre and post tests were rated by seven teachers who are experienced teachers having taught this course, who understand the rubric, and who know what they're doing. Each essay was rated by two teachers so that they could ensure inter-rater reliability. The rubric was taken from a previous study, which is sort of a classic study in second language writing, and the raters were supposed to assign a score from 1 to 10 on each of these aspects, organization, development, cohesion, structure, vocabulary, and mechanics. So what did they find? Among the beginner students, everybody improved over time, which is great. And we also see that the givers improved more than the receivers in most categories. Now, among the intermediate learners, the picture was a little bit different. Everyone improved, but not very much, honestly. And also, there were no differences between the givers and the receivers. And even though there were no differences among the intermediate learners, the authors conclude that just receiving feedback might not be enough. We might be missing out on more benefits if all our learners are doing is seeing feedback on the writing. And this quote sums it up nicely. It says, the act of providing feedback may also improve student writing and may be the most beneficial aspect of peer review. Of course, to know for sure whether this is the most beneficial aspect of peer review, we need many more studies, we need bigger studies, 
and we need to understand what's going on at different levels. In this study, we only saw those effects for the beginner group. And also, we need to think about what effects, which takes me to the limitations or areas of concern, I guess we can call them. So the first area of concern has to do with the assessment measure. I understand why the authors did a 30-minute essay in class, but I wonder if perhaps some of the progress that the learners made, especially the intermediate level learners, was simply not captured by this assessment measure. And the other areas of concern come from things that were not disclosed. As I said before, the topics or prompts for these 30-minute essays were not disclosed, so we don't really know what the learners had to write or even how different the pretest and the post-test were. We also don't know the sample size per level and treatment group. Remember earlier that I said that they had a mix of beginning and intermediate learners in the giver and the receiver groups? Well, they never told us, for example, how many givers were beginning level or how many receivers were beginning level. They only told us the total number of givers and the total number of receivers, but we don't know what the distribution was per level, which is how the results were analyzed. And the other thing that they don't talk about, but I think it would have been very, very important to disclose, is the feedback itself. From the description that the authors provide, it seems that the receivers saw feedback that was crafted by the instructor and the givers provided their own feedback. So I'm curious, how did this feedback compare in quantity and quality? If the givers spent so much more time giving detailed feedback, whereas perhaps the receivers only got some vague comments to improve the paragraph, well, that is a big difference that we need to take into account that might potentially explain why one group did better than the other. In one area of further exploration that the authors identify is this issue of global versus local aspects of writing. Since all of the sessions focused only on global issues, we don't know the effects of giving versus providing feedback on local issues. In other words, the effects of editing papers on self-editing. And despite the limitations of this study, I do think that we can take away a couple of pedagogical implications. The first one is that it is good to engage learners in critically evaluating samples. This study shed light on some of the value of doing that, and I do agree that it is something that we should incorporate more. And the other implication has to do with how this study was set up. In this study, some learners received feedback and had to revise papers, but there was no negotiation. And so it might be that receiving feedback without negotiation may not be very helpful. And that makes me think of what we do when we provide feedback to the learners. And so the takeaway is feedback and forth. And this back and forth applies not only to feedback, but also to learning itself. I think the study we unpacked today is a good reminder to view learners not just as the receivers of information, but also as contributors and how much that can benefit themselves. That's just my take on it. As usual, I encourage you to read the original and draw your own conclusions. Thank you for tuning in and until next time.